What's up, what's up, what's up, JTV, JP, and I, yeah, okay. So, I've been hearing some different news and things about me and stuff okay. like that, and it's all cool and stuff, but I was, um, I was thinking about <laughs> the time when I got in an argument with, uh, uh my, uh, what's that thing called, with my, uh, uh, how can I say that? With uh, somebody about child support, right? And this lady was like, because she knew, I guess she knew the information. And she was like, oh, you just left your kids. And I was laughing. I just swear I busted up. She's talking about what you laughing about. And I said, what do you mean I left my kids? <laughs> and she said, yeah, you just left your wife with your kids and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, I did not. And like, well, what happened? You know, and I'm like, well, her mom paid for the divorce. So we divorced. And she's like, well, you didn't stop it or anything, right? And I'm like, mm, no, because me and her in Philippines already agreed that, already agreed to the terms if we were to get divorced. And she's like, well, that don't, that sounds strange to me. And I said, well, I mean, what you have to understand is me and her we married because we were good friends i mean we were really good friends and she was free to do what she want i was free to do what i want um and we never argue um uh we never argued i think the only thing we argued about was just who was going to take the kids on the weekend and that was it i, I literally literally tell me that was it because she was um i mean she was the type of woman that you just it, it's just making it the worst would come out of her if you tied her down <laughs> and I don't think she would have went for it and I'm not going and I don't you know hit my wife or anything like that so it was all cool and stuff and I think one other time we got in an argument when I was talking about budgeting and I was trying to um, teach her how to do it and she kind of got like a little upset I wouldn't say upset but no, I wasn't upset. She just said, well, what was the purpose of it? And then I told her that the purpose of it is just to see where you're spending your money. And so she was reluctant at first, but I said, hey, just just relax. And, uh, wow. I said, just relax and um, just let me show you what to do and stuff. But I, I, it was really interesting because I think she took classes in college in accounting or something like that. So... You know, I was like, whatever, but, um, but anyway, she took him and stuff, right? And so, uh, I showed her and stuff, and it was really interesting, because years later, she was like, oh, you know, um, uh, years later, she's like, oh, you know, it was good that you showed me the budgeting thing, because it really, it really helped her, and I mean, it helped me, too, which I need to start doing again, and so, anyway, uh, but yeah, our arguments wasn't that, and our terms were... $300 a month and um, what was it $300 a month and da, 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 no alimony and I told her anytime she need money just call you know and so we went to the um, paralegal place I think that's what the guy that actually did it we looked at the terms the terms where we both had legal custody over the kids but I gave her uh, custody physical custody and that was part of our deal, you know. And so we signed the papers and everything, went to court. Court was funny because there was a couple there, a white couple, and they were before our case. And the um, judge was telling the woman, like, why did you shoot at your husband, you know, in the house? And the bullet went in the room where a baby was at. Their baby was at. And, and I don't know, she gave some reason and stuff. And me and first kids wives we looked at each other and we were like wow we have absolutely no reason to divorce because we both will agree we didn't have no I mean at that time I don't know what she's thinking now but you know we really had no reason to divorce and so we divorced I had to sell my car and I was trying to stay in LA and stuff but uh, a friend of mine I called he uh, wasn't there and my ex she was started to hang around some sisters and I think they put a bug in her head not all of them one that was on my side but the other one my I know what happening. You know, I hear everything that's going on. Not everything, but I heard a lot of what was going on. And they were like, oh, you got to get him out your house. You got to get him out your house. And 
I think that was after we divorced. So she was like, we got to get out by Monday and call my friend. He wasn't there. So my mom, you know, she had already told me to come to Hawaii because I had almost got um, involved in a carjacking. And had I did have a gun, those brothers would have been dead. And I probably would have been in jail or I probably self-defense for sure wouldn't have been in jail and stuff. And, um, and so instead of getting a gun, I said, uh, I'll just go to um, Hawaii and stuff, you know. But um, then right after that conversation, then that stuff happened. And so I just ended up going to Hawaii. I had to sell my car for exactly $300, which was that child support for that month. And then I had to, uh, had to sell my jewelry and stuff. So I can get, um, I had like diamond rings and gold chains and all kinds of stuff. And I just sold it so I can get a ticket and uh, went to Hawaii. And luckily my brother, my second brother, first brother, he, uh, he had a job at this place and I was able to get it in place. So I was, um, got paid in time so I could send my child support and stuff, you know. And um, I never missed a child support. I'm probably late, a couple of days or whatever, but I always sent a minimum, especially when after I moved to Hawaii, I was sending anywhere between, a minimum of 600, sometimes 700. A couple of times she asked for $1,000 you know, for one month, and I sent it to her, then the next month, I just sent it to her again, actually, I was going to start, just keep sending a thousand, and stuff, but I was thinking, no, nah, let me just wait until she asked, because, um, I didn't, I didn't know what her financial thing was, because she was, um, she had a girlfriend at that time, and two grown women, they stand together and stuff, so, it was interesting, but the reason I'm talking about this is because, uh, I kept all her receipts and stuff, and so, I got some boxes, and, I mean, some, you know, some boxes and stuff in the house and I have a uh, what's that thing called a backpack that I bought in Thailand like years ago but the the button I mean the zipper is broken I need to go get it fixed but it's like pure raw leather and um so I was going through that and going through some other stuff and I ran into all of my receipts that I paid for like 17 years I, I think one month I didn't um I think I kept the receipt I'm sure I did but I ended up going back to um LA because I wasn't going to I didn't want to actually live in Japan because me and my second wife we were like having these problems and stuff and it wasn't about um, about anything because we ended up having an open relationship and stuff but um, it wasn't about anything bad or anything but I was just getting tired of Japan and I wanted to go back and see my kids and it was just so many other things that were on my mind so I actually did leave brought my jewelry with me and stuff and that was the second time because first time I left I wasn't going to go back and then the second time I just started selling my jewelry and so I went downtown to get a to get something and they wouldn't sell it to me because they said you have to have a a business number or something I'm like huh so they're like you gotta go to Norwalk and do this and do that so maybe I went down there and did everything so maybe I did have an LLC I'm not sure about but on the way to uh, Hawaii and stuff I mean on Thailand I ended up coming back to Japan that's how I ended up back here but um yeah, I got all those receipts, and what I need to do is copy them, you know, because I was thinking about, well, I mean, yeah, of course, just, um, you know, one time I was just thinking about just, for the heck of it, just um, make a photocopy of all of them, and then put them up on YouTube, showing all the years and stuff that I made them, you know, cap them, so, but I definitely have to photocopy them just in case something happened, and um, yeah, it was, it was a trip, though, you know, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because um, I was talking to a friend the other day, and he was talking about um, how, what's that thing? You know, he was talking about child support and stuff like that. And then another friend said that he heard something about the, through the grapevine about my child support stuff. And I'm like, okay, you know, so, um, you know, because people probably watch my videos and take things and twist them up and stuff, you know, so it was a trip, though. And then, um... But it was, I mean, you know, but every time I go to L.A., you know, I can stay at the house. Her girlfriend, we cool. I got to call her Master D because we um, played some um, blackjack and she beat me. And, I mean, she had me beat like 21 and 13 or 21 and 9 or something. It was no way I could catch up because she was good. So, but recently, I mean, like the last time we talked, she said I didn't have to call her Master D. But it's all cool. You know, she's cool and stuff, you know. And um, let me see what else. Um. Oh, so anyway, after we had divorce, right, um, I was I went to Hawaii and ended up meeting this Japanese lady, and I asked her how to pronounce the tsu in Japanese, 
and she was like, okay, and she told me, and um, I was sitting there, you know, next to her, and she just leaned her head on my shoulder, so I'm like, wow, what is she doing? So I was just gonna get up, I thought it was kind of rude, so I just waited there about like five minutes, and then um, I kind of tapped her in the head and said, are you all right? And she said, yeah, so she spoke a little English, so we talked and stuff, and our relationship uh, before we got married was really bumpy, because she was like, it was like she was like kind of demanding and um she wanted to meet at a certain time and, and if i couldn't she'd get upset and stuff but you know she was always taking me out to eat and buying me some clothes not like i needed or anything you know but i was like whatever so um at that time she was married and she didn't tell me and she said she was gonna go back to hawaii for three months and come back and so i'm like okay cool you know because she said she had to do something I'm like, cool, you know, so I'm thinking she'd go back there and find a boyfriend or whatever. So I wasn't even thinking about it. And I get this phone call about three or four months later. And it's her. And so we're talking and stuff. And then she said, you know, I guess the end of her visa came, her choice visa, whatever. And she said uh, she got to go. And so that would have definitely been the last time we met. So I didn't know what to do because I just, because I really couldn't pay her back for anything. So I was just saying to myself, okay, what should I do? Because I definitely didn't want to get married, but I didn't know what to do. So I said, oh, okay. So I ain't going to lie. I said, hey, you know, let's get married. And um, for, and then after two years, she gets your green card, and then we just divorce. And I swear that was it. That was the proposal I gave her and stuff. And she was like, no, no, I like you a lot. We can get married. We can stay together and stuff like that. But, um, you know, like I said, the arguments and stuff that we had, which wasn't really big, but I just do not like arguing. And because of that, I, was, I already was in my mind like, no, I, I don't think I could, you know, be with her for any length of time. So, ooh, wow, okay. So, um, I was like, cool. So, we, you know, we got together and, you know, she introduced me to Sushi. She was well-dressed and everything. Um, she didn't work, but she had money. And later I found out, she, you know, she had that um, jewelry business and stuff with her ex-husband white dude from Canada and um, they were still doing it and stuff and um, it was, it was um, how can I say really interesting but after work you know I went to go play basketball she wanted to spend time with me I think the problem that I didn't notice with her was she liked a lot of sex and I I wasn't I mean I like sex but it wasn't like I needed it every day and then because she was um, just so you know, the arguments that we had about a like, little petty stuff. To me, it was petty. Maybe to her, it was serious. You know, up, oh, what am I doing? I always do that. And so, I was like, uh, you know, but we did have sex, but I mean, it was like, I'm thinking she probably could have did it like three times a day, you know? And then, um, I guess because I wasn't cultured or, you know, um, I'm not fine. How you said? You know, you raw. I was raw, and she was into the fine dining stuff. And she always dressed nice and always had sushi and went to the best restaurants. And so I'm going there, you know, and she like, oh, I'm like, I don't eat meat, and I don't eat this. <laughs> and she was mad, you know, because we really couldn't just sit down and really eat anything, you know. And so, you know, of course, that was my bad and stuff. But um, two years, you know, two years went by and stuff, and uh, eventually uh, things happened. And um, when I, she ended up talking about she had to go back to Japan because her husband had married a Filipino woman, and they were going to go back to, uh, he was going to move to the Philippines with her and stuff. So she had to go back, and she was like, hey, let's go to Japan. I'm like, no, I'm not going to Japan. She's like, why, why? I'm like, no, I'm going to go back to L.A. and finish college, you know, I'll go back to SMC. I'm um, we'll going to West LA somewhere and go to LA, SMC, and finish up, and uh, you know, go to US, UCLA or something, wherever. And uh, she was like, "Why?" And I'm like, "So I can get some money." You know, she said, "We're coming to Japan." I came here the first week. It was like, "Wow!" I made like a hundred something dollars playing those pachinko machines and stuff. But we had been married maybe a year and a half. But what happened was when we went back, we had we didn't tell them we were leaving or anything. So when we came back to visit, they had her immigration kept her for like almost three to six hours or something and finally they just told her they'll let her go if she gives up her uh japanese her uh, residence i mean her green card so she did so they let her go but we we're just visiting anyway 
and uh, we went, you know, had our fun and stuff, and went back to Japan. That was it, you know. And then um, after a while, you know, things happened with us, and um, she, you know, I think I just think we both we didn't get tired, but um, I think what it what what I learned about Japanese women, and I'm not saying all of them, but some. If they're not in the game, what they do is they're studying you and they're learning the game. They'll pick up the words you say and start saying the same things back to you and stuff like that. And, um, and so, she, you know, she started doing her thing, you know, but like I said, I didn't care anything. So then one time I was going to the store to get some ice cream coming back. And then she started, yeah, like, oh, you just going to go to the club or whatever. I'm like, no, I'm just going to the store. No, you're not. And whatever. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to the store and get some ice cream and come back. You know, and I don't believe you and stuff and start yelling. I'm like, whatever. So I <laughs> just went to the club and then came back. And uh, I think a couple of days later, she said she wanted a divorce. And I was like, cool, whatever. So I ended up calling this one girl. Well, I called her like, um, I feel you had to and stuff when we were talking because I didn't know who the number was. And so I called her and she ended up living in Waukeham. So I just came down that night, stayed like a, three days or something, then went back. And then when I went back, she was like, oh, she wanted to divorce and this and that. And I'm like, okay, whatever, you know. And, um, but when I did come back, she had to give me, oh, okay. The reason I came back, I went, I was on my way to Thailand to buy so much uh, jewelry, but I called her. The only reason I ended up staying in Japan and I'm here now is because she said that she needed help um, with the business because she had broke uh, two cats. She had broke her. Uh, she had broke her. Uh, her foot and stuff. So I was like, okay. And so, uh, well, I told her I didn't have a visa, but we were still married. So she said, don't worry about it. So I went down and um, I go ahead and still give me a permanent residence visa, which I should have got. Well, I'm gonna say I should have got because if I would have got it just if you Japan, would have never happened. All the people out there who know me and the advice I gave and all that stuff would have never happened. You know, I am a lot of people's lives would have been very different. And so um, I went and he said, well, What do you want? And I'm like, oh, Should I get the three year or the permanent resident? But I was not thinking about <laughs> studying in Japan. So I said, Forget it. So I got a three year visa. Okay. And they called and stuff. And that was it. But had I got a permanent, I would have definitely got that. But, um, and so then, um, you know, I was going back and forth and doing stuff, helped her. And then the last I was helping her, you know, she ended up moving her stuff out. And I stayed over the night in the empty house. She came back that night and she said, uh, hey, just uh, leave. And um, that's it. You know, I said, like, um, and I didn't even ask her why she divorced me, but she told me she fell in love with some guy from Sri Lanka or something like that. And I'm like, whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not just your business. You don't have to tell me anything. And she's like, how much money you want? I'm like, I don't want nothing. Just keep it all. Sometimes I think I regret that, but had I had that money, just if it wouldn't have happened, because I probably would have just took that money and I don't know, probably went back to LA and started up a business and uh, finished college and stuff. But um, but I did, you know, during that marriage, I did go back and visit my children. I called a lot, um, even my first wife. You know, we had a lot of conversations about even getting together. But I was like, nah, because you know, after hanging out with the um, you know, the sisters and stuff. You know, it's no telling what they put in our head. And I was not about to get trapped up in anything because I was happy and so I said, no. And I wasn't gonna, and I, you know, I was actually, I actually thought about divorcing my first Japanese wife to go back and be with my kids. But, you know, where am I gonna stay? How fast am I gonna job? And, you know, I'm sending like 600 a month at that time. And I didn't know if I'd be able to get a job fast enough to sustain that or even find a place for me to stay. Because I probably could have took like $20,000 and went back to L.A. and stuff. But, you know, God was like, he didn't really tell me not to go. He didn't say, you know, just think about, it. you know, that's on you. So I got like zero advice from God. And so I was thinking like, oh, forget it. You know, and, you know, since then we've been still friends from out of the L.A., whatever. You know, her friend is cool. So it's all cool. Now, if a lot of people been watching my, a long time ago, we had this argument on Facebook on my daughter's account and stuff. And it was just so funny because a lot of people didn't know the true story and she didn't tell them. 
and they're like, you just left her with the babies and stuff. And I'm like, no, I didn't have a place to stay. I'm not going to be a bum and, and be homeless in LA, you know? So that's why I had to leave and stuff, you know, that and plus the other situation. And so, um, yeah, it was cool, but it was all cool. But my kids, I love all my kids. I went to both of their graduations. Uh, my son, he needed extra money. I sent it to my, you know, my daughter every time I called. You know, me and her spoke more than me and my son did, though, until he got a little older and stuff. And, um, you know, things work out the way they work out. You know, I did what I could do. You know, um, well, yeah, and that's it, you know, so it's a trip, though, because I think, uh, yeah, so, yeah, but when I heard that all these and stay their kids, that one was going off on me, and it, the mother one was going off on me, it was on Facebook, and I'm like, yo, and Lee, I'm like, y'all better get this story straight, you know, and then when I started <laughs> saying the story straight, it's mysteriously, the account disappeared. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, like I said, we never, if she wouldn't have divorced, if her mom wouldn't have, if her mom was funny, cool, um, I don't really know how she felt about me, but, you know, I'm not thinking she liked me, you know, but uh, I don't know, you know, because a lot of people look at me and they judge me, and their judgment of, it is just, of me is just so wrong. Uh, it is so wrong, and, and I'm like, I mean, you're talking about judging the book by the book cover. I mean, the way they judged me was just like so wrong, and I was just so sad about stuff. So, oh, oh it was really interesting, though. But um, yeah, her, her mother not paid for the divorce. We would have never gotten divorced, never, because we had absolutely no reason to divorce. Uh, we were going to find an action at one time when she came to um, in L.A. She was like, I'm going to just stop messing around, whatever. I'm just going to be with you. And then I went and called the sister and told her I wasn't going to call her anymore. And then she just happened to, thought it was weird that I left. And she came out there and called me on the phone. And stuff blew up. But I mean, that, that got cleared and stuff. But um, but actually, you know, she's, she was a really, she was like, cool. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just like, uh, you know, everybody, you know, who knew her, who went to the same high school, who knew her in the hood, you know, the only thing they said was that she just, like my best friend, one of my best friends, she was like, she just kept on talking, I don't know, she was just sitting there talking, talking, and you just didn't say anything, and I'm like, I just let her talk, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, because I know one thing, um, not all women, but I know um, there are some women who, when they talk a lot, you know, that talking makes them horny, so, if you know that, then, you know, then you can't have Get, 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 uh, get, whatever. I can't think of the words, but yeah. So it was, it was really interesting. Really, really interesting. Just you know, chatting with her, talking with her, being with her. Um, our sex life and stuff was good. It was nothing. I mean, we absolutely had nothing. We had absolutely no problems no problems it was like whatever and um she did what she did i was like whatever you know and people always say why and then your wife and i'm like why are y'all telling me so <laughs> but, but you know i'm like you know i just told them you know we married we were friends we i don't think we were in love like you know most people do get married because they're in love and i think that was the bond you know because when i was in hawaii when ll came out um you know, and everybody on there at that time, I was like in 70, I don't know, 1994, I guess, or 95, right before I um, came to Japan. And um, uh, at that time on LOL, everybody was doing that phone sex, you know, and you just meet people, tell them where you are from or whatever, you know, and you have phone sex with white couples and stuff. And if you're good, like one time I was talking to one white couple, and, it was so cool that they they was like, oh please come, let's come back to the stage. We want to do it with you. <laughs> like no, no, it's cool. No, no, we'll pay, we pay for you know. My wife was not gonna let me at that time. Was not gonna let me just go and um, you know leave Hawaii just to go to the states and, and have a threesome and stuff. <laughs> you know, but it was funny because I went to a bookstore. I think it was in Hawaii too, and I wrote the I got this book and the name of the book. I was thinking it was like. Um, 
something I can't think of what the name of the house was I really don't know what the name of the book was but I wasn't paying attention so when I got the book um, and the book was called Threesome but I didn't read the title I just kind of glanced over it and I liked the color so I just bought it and stuff you know and, and I did open it up and it was a lot of sex and stuff but I thought it was like a romance book because I, I swear to God I swear to God I swear I did not I did not read the cover so it was White Lady there and uh, she was like uh, oh that's a nice book and I'm like oh really she said yeah you know and, you know because she read it was three summer stuff and <laughs> And she was, and I was thinking like, why is she all so, all happy and, you know, want to, you know, get with me, you know, based on a conversation and stuff. And I swear, I, I did not look at, I mean, it was like months before I finally paid attention to the, <laughs> the title of that book. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I was like, and I said, okay, now I understand what she was talking about. Because had I been, on, had I been paying attention, I was like, here's my number, let's call, you know, call and let's meet up and stuff. I think it was in Hawaii. It was either in Hawaii or LA, but I'm thinking it had to have been Hawaii or, or, or if it was LA, it would have been um, when I am, um, when I am, um, what was I doing? When I was um, visiting there or something, but I can't remember because I know. Oh no no no! Or maybe it was. I don't know. Maybe it was when I did go back to LA because I did go back to LA and stay for like a month or so. And I wasn't coming back, but then my um, first Japanese wife called me and told me to come back and stuff, so I left. <sighs> but I don't know what's to it. But it was good, though, at the time, staying with my kids and stuff, and, you know, staying with the ex and her girlfriend and stuff. And oh, oh, it was really interesting, you know. And me, her, the ex, you know, we all get along, we still get along and everything. So but I think I spent something like 130000 Thirty, hundred, thirty, hundred, thirty-five thousand dollars. I, I sent to my wife and child support. You know, in seventeen years, so almost what? How you count? Get I did thirteen years. I don't know what. I don't know. But anyway, it was, it was it was good. So you know, I can't. You know, I don't. I have no shame. Whatever I did, what I was supposed to do. But it was interesting because. I, before we got divorced, and then we've been divorced and stuff. I was trying to get her into real estate. That was so cool that she did that back in 1990s and 1991. She'd been rich. She'd probably been a billionaire by now. But, uh, yeah, you know, so my life with her, you know, got a lot of stories. <laughs> I shouldn't be telling their business. But it's just funny. I mean, because I really didn't care the stuff I went through, you know, in the Philippines and stuff, you know. And, oh, shoot, this is the red light district. And as you can see... There is no one out. Everybody's no one. No parking lots are empty and stuff compared to what it used to be before. But um, yeah, it was really, um, really interesting, you know. And uh, she's cool, you know. She was my first wife. Um, uh, we had a lot of fun together. Did a lot of things. Um, I remember one time we were. Out in LA, in Central, uh, South Central, and stuff over near, I think on Lossy, uh, what's that street? Um, um, uh, Figueroa or something like that. And I think I went to go visit my cousins and stuff. And uh, we were uh, at some stoplight, and these sisters drove in the caddy, and they looked at her, she looked at them, and I guess they must have said something. I wasn't paying attention. The only thing I heard was, You black bitches. <laughs> I was like, Argh! You know, I've turned the corner real quick on other chasing us and stuff, you know, or not. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, you can't be saying that. You can't be trying to get me shot because you're tripping and stuff. You know, I was like, this girl, wow. But we weren't married at that time, you know, but why did we even get, we didn't, she went to the military. She wasn't pregnant then. She got, she went to the military and, um, and uh, asked me to go. I went and we just, you know, and I asked if she wanted to get married. And then she's like, okay. <laughs> Um, Cause I didn't want, know what to do. Cause we were just, I mean, it was almost like breaking, you know, to one of your best friends saying why and stuff. And then the military, she wrote letters saying, I don't want to marry you. And the next day I got a, a letter saying, I want to marry you. But either way, it didn't matter. Cause like I said, she was just really cool. I mean, she was really, really a cool person, you know, but 
I don't know. It was funny though, cause one time she was like, "Oh, the reason I don't like you is because you never protected me." <laughs> I started laughing, and I said, "Come on, whenever you," I said, "Whenever me and you was around, nobody bothered you." And she was like, "Oh, oh yeah, that's true, huh?" <laughs> it was so funny, but um, but yeah, and then my, like I said, my second wife we met in Hawaii, and I, I tell you the truth, I said, "Want to get married?" She said, "No." And then when she came back from that three year, that three month vacation, then she asked me to marry her. And I swear I wanted to say, hell no. I wanted to say no. And it wasn't because I didn't like her because I had just got divorced and I just wanted to be some, spend some time by myself. And I was in Hawaii and the first nine months I was not having any sex, a lot of them, oh man, Hawaii had some beautiful, I mean, I don't know what they look like now, but back then, oh my God, when everybody was in shape, they had some beautiful women. I had a lot of women coming at me, and she was like, do you want to get married? And when she, and I was going to say no, but I said, no, nah, since I asked her, you know, forget it, since she asked me, okay, but I swear I didn't think we were going to stay married for a long time, but we ended up staying married for seven years, and um, after we got divorced, I saw her in Hawaii. And uh, like I said, we had an open relationship and stuff. And so she was um, there and uh, she happened to see me. She said, hey, you know, come back to my place. Let's have dinner together. And I'm sure if we would have went, so, I mean, I wouldn't have had sex with her, but I'm sure she would have. But, you know, I thought about it, you know, after a while, you know, I was thinking maybe I should have went back with her and stayed with her. And at that time, I'm sure she wasn't divorced. She probably was divorced. I probably could have got married again. You know what I mean? Because it was my business and stuff, you know, and I was the one that had got it made it big and stuff. And things would have been good, you know. And she was so much older than me, so she probably would have chilled out and stuff. I don't know. But she looked so, so beautiful. You know, really sexy, really stylish. I mean, she was like on a level. I mean, she was a millionaire, you know, so. It's on a level higher than me. They were making her and her husband making a million a year. I don't know what they did with that money. Crazy. But, um, yeah, it was odd. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Ah, I didn't want to go this way. But, um, yeah, it was, it was it was really interesting, though. Know? But the whole time we were married, I really, I know I'm probably repeating that myself and stuff, but the whole time we were married, I, I can't do that. Um, the whole time we were married, I never knew how much money was in the bank. You know, I really never knew that. And she was out there messing around with them African guys and stuff, some American guys. I don't know how much money she was getting. But, I mean, because I was making, like, 10 Gs a month myself. And I was off and on close to it, you know. And, um, but I was always giving her, like, a lot of that money and stuff, you know. I don't know why. Oh, because he was just wasting it on pink pachinko. I don't know how much she wasted on that stuff. 5000 plus a, a month or whatever. And um, I don't know, it was like really interesting. I mean, it was, uh, they go to police. And I don't know if it says no U turn. Let me stop because I don't know if they're going to turn left or right or whatever. Okay. I need to make a U turn. But, um, yeah, it was it was a trip though. But <laughs> but a lot of my stories I got in in my YouTube. But it's just funny. But you know, it's just recently because of some things I heard and stuff. And one of my friends said something, and I was like, dang man. But yeah, my um, you know, I wasn't like a, a lot of guys who probably came out here and got married because of um, because they was in the military. I was in the military, and I came out between 1990 and 93 to to Okinawa for two week tour. No, no, I was between 86 and 90 because I was in Hawaii and I was married and stuff and I, you know, the guy's like, oh, you know, have you been to um, the beach? And I'm like, no, nah, because the brothers didn't talk to me. I don't know why they didn't talk to me. So the white dudes was taking me out around and stuff, you know, took me to the ocean with snow and snorkeling. It was so clear. It's like, you know, a glass of water. I was like, whoa. You know, and um, and at that time I was like, not even into Asian women at all, you know, it's just, you know, my wife and that was it, you know, and I was in the Philippines at that time, and, um, 
you know, all of, like I said, you know, plenty of times, all of the Filipino women that I did date or whenever I didn't introduce myself to them, uh, people introduced them to me. And uh, it was, it was, it was really interesting. It was really interesting. But I was with one of my friends. He was cool. I don't know if we guys went back in the Philippines at the time. He had a red sock. Can't think of his name, but he, man, he took me to these wretched um, Filipino bars. And I mean, it wasn't wretched like it was um, bad or anything. They were all good, you know. But it was like the women there. I, I wouldn't say wretched. Uh, wretched is not a really. A, oh, it does sound like it's bad. But I mean, you know, we're just being themselves. And I, you know, I'm in there talking to them, and them women, man, they were going hard. Oops, I need to follow them to see what's going on. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do that. Uh, they were like going off. They're like going off on me. I wasn't going off on me. They were just coming at me hard. Da 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 and da da da. And you know, and I'm gonna tell you the truth. I ain't going and I know you guys probably won't believe it, but a lot of women said I'm handsome. A lot of women say I'm fine, and I don't get it. And oh, I don't have a lot of gas. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Display. Oh, okay, I got them. Let me see if I can find them. And um, to give you guys a live update. Election. Action Live. GST 50. GSPN. Action News. Live. And, um, and uh, what happened? Uh, so, yeah, I ain't joking. A lot of women say that about me. You know, and... And they were like, I guess them. I must have walked in. I must have been like a quadruple ten, and them women just couldn't hold themselves. So instead of saying, "Oh, you so cute" and all that stuff, they were like going hard. You know how it is back in the old days when they said, "If a woman is beautiful, you talk to her like she's ugly, and if she's ugly, you talk to her like she's beautiful." It was like one of those kind of things. And I'm sitting, my friend, looking and stuff, and I'm like, "Yo, get me out of here." You know, he said, no, nah, they're cool. But they were relentless and they didn't get up, give, um, they didn't um, um, give up or, I mean, um, how can I say that? They didn't, yeah, they didn't give up or nothing. They just kept going and going. And so finally I was like, whatever. So I just sat there because I didn't know where the hell we were at and stuff. So maybe after about 45 minutes, he left and stuff. But he was a cool bro. But um, I, yeah, in, in, the, in the Philippines, there was a lot of stuff going on on that base. I didn't live on base. And I really didn't talk to the bros that much because, um, I don't know. They were like always talking crap to me, especially when I gained weight. Then I got lost. And when I gained weight, I want to do say something to them. I'm like, huh? Where you think you at? <laughs> you ain't in your neighborhood. I, I will smash you, you know, and uh, like break you up. And he was, you know, it was kind of funny and stuff. And then, um, like you know, I didn't up getting, I didn't end up losing weight and stuff and getting yoked again, like I was in high school and before I joined the military or whatever. And, um, yeah, it was, it was interesting, huh? But yeah, um, I didn't eat my, my wife now. Um, friend said she wanted to meet me, so I went to the bar, and she happened to be there. We talking, and uh, she, uh, I said, hey, you want to talk to me? She's like, no. Nope. I was like, okay, fine, you know. And then I get in my car and drive, and she's having trouble trying to get out of the parking lot because the thing that stops the car was up. It was already down, and she couldn't understand why it was down and all this stuff. And probably what happened was somebody probably made a mistake and paid for her parking and stuff by mistake. Because sometimes that happens. People get drunk and they push the wrong button. And, um, I would have wrong button, so I should say. And, um, so I said, What you doing? Let's go to the beach. She's like, All right, so I went to the beach, and I got a little kiss. And next year, in my place, I'm like, Hey, let's do it. She was like, Blah, blah, blah. And then things, one thing happened. And, and it was weird because. I remember sometimes going to our house, but I don't remember calling so much. So I ain't gonna lie, recently I was just asking, how did, how did, I said, how often did we meet? You know, how did we end up getting married? Cause I don't remember any of this stuff. And <laughs> she's like, oh, I used to call you like four times a, a week and I should come over for dinner and stuff. And I can only remember one time going over her house actually for dinner. And I'm like, you joke. You say, yeah, I'm like, really? Every week she said, yeah, every week, you know, cause I wasn't even, cause I wasn't cooking or anything. I was eating out all the time. And I'm like, what? You joking? Shit's so like, yeah. And I was like, ah, okay. I don't remember any of that because 
she we were like doing it and stuff and it was so good i was just like can i come inside you and she's like okay you know and we weren't expecting to get pregnant you know and she not getting pregnant like really quick it was like within a month or so after we um got uh, after we started messing around or two months or something like that and we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked for about nine months you know and this and after nine months we um got married in, um, you know a month before my son's birthday and um because i was gonna because i was like because my mom said something that was really fucked up and so i said well you know and then i told her you know if you don't want a kid you know i had a kid but if you don't want it then you know let me have it come to the states and visit anytime you want and so you know i waited for her and we we really discussed it because i was like listen you know, I was not expecting to get married to you. She was not expecting to get married to me. She was not expecting to get pregnant or anything, you know. And when we got, um, you know, because I didn't know that Japan, once you get married, you know, they got this system and stuff. So what I told her, I said, listen, you know, that's, what we agreed on was that we'll just get married until our son turned 18, then we divorce. And that's okay, cool, because we didn't want our... Um, we didn't want our baby to um, be in a single home family, you know, because I went through that. It wasn't not cool, you know, she never did. So we just got married, you know, and it was just for the baby's sake. You know, I was making like three, thirty-five hundred, forty-five hundred dollars a month. She used to make whatever she was making. Um, just giving her, you know, so I guess I was standing, got to pay rent and self support, whatever. So I gave her some, some money and stuff. And that was it. And I was like, listen, don't wash my clothes. Don't cook me breakfast. Don't cook me dinner. Don't cook me lunch. Don't do anything. You do what the heck you want. You want to do whatever. Go whatever. I don't care. You know, <laughs> and whatever, you know, because I wanted to keep it on those terms because I didn't want to just like, oh, well, everything's going good. And she keeps it on the terms and I'm falling in love or doing something silly like that. And then all of a sudden, you know, a sledgehammer come down and bring me back to reality. So I always kept it like that even to this day I keep it like that so we get into um some discussion I said hey 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 listen we are listen we only married for our kid and that's it you know but now we got two so I got like six more years and stuff and after that I kept you know I, I I'm, I'm telling you I often say hey when we get divorced when, the, when our um, youngest kid graduates from um, high school what you want to do and she like I say you want to divorce and she like no no I'm like why not <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're kind of, you know, what's going on? We're not, you know what I'm saying, you know? But I, I have no idea and stuff is going to happen. But um, I definitely didn't um, get her pregnant or anything so I can uh, stay. Because I, I heard a lot of people kept saying that and stuff. And people said that to me. And actually, like I said, when I came to Japan, I didn't know anything about these women or what was going on or anything. And I'm glad I didn't because I didn't get caught up in that BS hype that that really doesn't it only exist because guys participate in the ideology of what a woman thinks he need to act like you know and i was not into that and so i didn't get caught up and like tonight i was talking to my brother he was like you always saying what you didn't do and you didn't get caught up and you never had those problems in japan i'm like i never did i mean i didn't i mean i had no women gonna do the stuff they do to me i mean you know i got to that one time you know I made a video about that. That was messed up. You know, she, she lucky, you know, because she almost, she almost, she was like a couple of seconds from getting popped and stuff, you know, but I had to control myself and stuff. But I was mad. But uh, we got home, I dealt with her. And you know, I gave it, I, I smashed hard, extra hard and stuff. But um, actually, she wanted to marry me. I had a few girls who wanted to marry me. One, two. Sure, seven wanted to marry me. And they, um, but after I got married, then they told me that, and they were like, "Oh, oh it was eight, so I forget the one." They're like, "I want to marry you. I want to marry." I'm like, well, "I gotta can't just be, you know." One thing I tell guys in my videos about Japanese women, they make all the plans in their minds and everything. They don't tell you anything, but expect you to understand 
you know, you know how it is in the States, how they say, um, like women, I don't know if women actually say it or not, but it was this thing like women would say something like, well, if you love me, then you will know how I am just by how I act and stuff. And I, I never understood that. I never asked any of the homies about it, but, um, I'm like, cause one of them, one of my girlfriends said that and I'm like, whoa, if you don't tell me how you are, I'm not going to know. My mama told me to ask, don't be guessing ask and if she don't tell you that's on her but don't um don't uh where do please go oh darn it uh, i'm tired i'm gonna go back make you turn i oh, know i can't go this other way home and um and so i was like okay cool whatever and um how can i say it? um oh you know i made a video the other day and i think i talked about the same thing so i'm gonna have to delete it Wow, I just remembered that. But anyway, um, yeah, it, it, it was really interesting, you know. And um, you know, they were telling me that. And then, like I said, my other videos, it was one, the one, one of the girls. Oh, so it was nine. So I had nine girls. I'm starting to remember. Ah, 10, 11. 11 women wanted to marry me, all at the same time. And um, oh no, 12. I remember 12. Okay, I'm starting to think of a little more. 13, uh, let's see, I can't think of any more, they'll pop in my mind, and, um, oh man, I forgot what I was going to say, oh, yeah, I came down the street the other day, and I think I was talking about the same thing, I should put both of the videos up anyway, like, hey, yeah, you, you, you made the same thing, I'm like, yeah, I said the same thing twice, let's see, yeah, I'm so anyway, um, you know, it, it was all cool and stuff. You know, I forgot what I was gonna say and stuff. But um, yeah, that's what. That's how I ended up getting married. As soon as we got married, man, all kinds of shit happened. This, this was the most dramatic <laughs> marriage I had ever. You know, even with my first wife when she was doing, you know, we, I mean, both of my first two marriages were open relationships. And so I, recently I was telling my wife, you know, you can go do what the hell you want to get like, you know, you get an open relationship, maybe it's less stress, you know, cause you don't gotta worry about it or you don't have to, um, you know, the wife won't talk to you as though she knows you're in love with her, you know? And so it was, it, it was funny though. But um, I think, uh, oh man, I should turn. I'm gonna keep on going straight. I wish there was some someone wanted something sweet to eat. But um what time is it? Oh shit, it's late. And so uh yeah, it was, it, was, it was interesting. But yeah, you know, I do hear a lot of guys just come inside of women and get unmarried, get them pregnant and stuff like that and all kinds of stuff. But I'll hear um sometimes it does happen. But some women they be using that sex as a trap. Because a lot of these women out here, from what I hear, they know when they're overlading. So if they don't want to get pregnant, then they'll use a condom, which I hear a lot of them don't. Well, I hear, but I'm not sure because they say they don't like it. And that might be a form of trapping the guy, whoever's going to have sex with it. She's going to like definitely have him doing it on her ovaries when she's overlading and no condoms. And then you end up getting her pregnant. Bam, there it is. Whoop, there you are. There, 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 there. I think a McDonald's. It looked like oh, it's still open. I should go in there and give me a hot apple pie. Hot apple pie. Cause I need something sweet. I don't think I have. Oh, maybe I should go to the store and buy some cookies or something. But anyway, um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I got all those receipts. You know, and people are like, oh, that's good. You should keep it. Cause somebody told me that boy, when you go back to the states, you can want some money. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? They say, yeah, you know, so. I'm just like, I don't want none. <laughs> but yeah, life is cool. Life is cool. But yeah, I have, you know, I've married three times. All of my wives are cool. My wife now, though, she's just, how can I say, really, like, conceited. And, uh, no, 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 she got a reason. I told you guys before why she mad at me, you know. I told you, but she she mad. She got she she has 
a legitimate reason to be mad at me and I'm like whatever <laughs> you know whatever <laughs> you know because you know she tried to play me and she ended up getting played and uh and uh but you know I was like why don't you just divorce me you know I don't, I don't know I really don't know why but anyway um yeah that's about it you know and it's funny though, because I do meet a lot of people like, would you come in here military this? And I'm like, nah, like, what happened? I just tell them what happened and how I got out here. And a lot of people, they don't believe it. They don't, ah, look at him, he's going to the street. They don't believe it. And I'm like, yeah, man, yeah, boy, believe it, because that's the truth. That's the truth. You know, but I'm so glad, like I said, you know. I just thank God every day that I came out here not knowing I should give me some Moss Burger. I do feel like eating. Yes, I've been driving for a long time. Um, that Moss Burger does look good. Just dropped my phone. 